Hello, good evening and welcome to my humble mother rally, Bedstead Junction. Um, now the locomotion you can see going around uh, tonight is the Hornby uh, 440 compound, NMS compound engine, uh, in black, uh, with, with the founder tender. And if you're interested, it's Hornby Railroad model. And a lot of the Hornby Railroad models are very, very worthy models, and this is one of them. And it's our 3276. The 440 LMS compound with Fowler Tender. Now these were the main one of the main express locomotives which the uh, Mid and Railway were using. I say right up until 1926. Okay. Now, why do they need to look for more powerful locomotives? Well, train lengths were getting longer, I suppose, and also maybe coaches were getting heavier. I mean, they were going uh, for a lot of. Uh, luxury features in the coaches and they needed a more powerful locomotive and in fact their small engine policy which was based around fast and frequent services like the Leyden uh, very often they had to uh, double head if they want to pull anything heavy over uh, big gradients now if you double head of course what you need is an extra locomotive crew and everything else so by 1926 the Midland Railway had come up with the um, decision that they wanted to make a 460 locomotive. Now, we'll be running this one in, and we'll be uh, talking about its replacement uh, in, in due course, which is called the Royal Scots class, okay? Now, both of these locomotives are in NMS black, plain black, and it's a locomotive delivery that I really like, okay? Now, we'll pull this lovely um, railroad locomotive in quite shortly. And then we'll be talking about the main feature of the, tonight, which is the uh, Royal Scots class, which we've got here in the siding. And in fact, in, in quite shortly, we'll be able to see both locomotives together. Okay? Right, so let's get up to the junction. And we'll witness, witness this one going into the junction quite shortly. Very, very nice set of runners, these. Nice motors in them. Um, you, you, like I say, you, you can get different um, versions of these 440s. You've got the, the Compound Midland, which you get in the Black Livery or in the Crimson Lake. Uh, you've got the GWR County Class. Uh, the Southern Railway Schools Class. And the LNER Hunts Class. All very, very worthy models, okay? And if you, can, if you find one that's described in good condition and everything else, and you want it, my opinion is if it's the right price, dive in, okay? I paid about £75 for this one, and it was brand new in the box, okay? This one was brand new. Right, so let's go into the station then. And then we have a look at our 460 locomotive, which was the replacement for the very, very worthy compounds. Right, let's have a quick change of points. Very nice over points, these locomotives. And these carriages are too. Uh, it's putting some BR Mark 1 carriages, but they were oh, the only other carriages I had in maroon livery, okay? So that's what we'll do as well. Uh, have a look at this now running in. In it comes. Over the points there. Over the junction quite nicely. And into the station. Four four zero compound locomotive. Uh, I don't even see it from here, but the Fowler Tender. Uh, so we zoom right in on that. Oops. Yeah, you can see it from here. You'll see like a kind of a guard rail around the top there to hold the coal in, and that tender is very very similar to the paint what goes on the Patriot class as well. Okay. And in the foreground, we got our LMS or our Scots class. We'll zoom out slightly to get the full length of it. Here we go. I'll be having a closer look at this one in due course, okay? So, just bear with me. We're just going to um, change the points. And we're going to watch this one go come out of the station. Hopefully trouble-free. Um, now, I do need to uh, improve and change my rolling stock. I'm, I'm, my rolling stock's beginning to become a bit of a problem. I've got more of a rolling stock problem than a locomotive problem at the moment. 
and we'll go into um, what, I'm be, what I'm going to be looking for to buy. Now, let's go into reverse. Come out nice and slow. Right. Okay, so we're up at the signal now, waiting for the right for the whistle to go away, waiting for the signal to, to change. Okay, so let's have a look now. We'll put this one into four gear and we'll be looking at the Royal Scott class. And there was a special reason why I needed this and I cut why I wanted this um, particular locomotive, why I needed to buy it. Let's just go into four gear. Now the first thing what I would say about this locomotive is it's now a beautiful runner, okay? I've had to do some servicing on it. I will explain to you what I had to do to it. Uh, you may have seen my previous video, uh, which is uh, seemed to be fairly popular, and that's where I actually said it was a, uh, I had a problem uh, eBay purchase, and this is the one. This is a problematic eBay purchase. Now we had two, um, this one developed two problems. Uh, one is that the um, the slide bar came out of the, uh, well the, the, the cross head came out of the slide bar. And I'll, I'll explain to that, it's all part of the ball gear. And that was actually dropped out, okay, and was actually flapping around. And also, the tender full plates uh, came off of this locomotive as well. I found this on the floor actually, believe it or not. And um, it, that's now back in place uh, due to a lot of patience and super glue. And it, it looks an awful lot better than what it was when, when it was put on before. And I'll explain to you about that before. Um, so I'll explain to you that uh, in a moment. Sorry for getting me, sorry for getting me words about that because it's getting quite late now, okay? Now, running beautifully. This one was described as brand new in the box, okay? Brand new in the box. So uh, if anybody says, well, why don't I look, look at the description first? I did, I always read the description, and it did say it was brand new in the box. I'm not sure if uh, photographs would have actually revealed the problem with the ball gear, but I never noticed it until it was going around the track. A relatively easy job to do, <coughs> okay? Fiddly, but easy to do. Now if you see one of these advertised, okay, with this problem, it might be worth looking at. If you if you if you're confident about repair it that you can fix it yourself, okay? Maybe controversial point that one there. But anyway, this one, like I said, I, I didn't want to send it back. It was a locomotive I wanted. The drawings on the box, so let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look. This is where we're gonna be going back to my previous video before I had the problem with this. Okay. Right, Looking at R3557, NMS 460, Royal Scots Class, Royal Army Service, Cla uh, Service Corps, number 6126. Beautiful, okay, that's lovely there. DCC ready. Nice pitch on the box. Beautiful there, lovely. And this one, differs to the modified versions okay these locomotives were modified in, the, in, the, in their service okay now let's go over let's go over the points we've got here so we know that the NMS were looking for uh, a replacement for their lovely 440s which had done, done them quite well up until the mid 1920s now really though to be fair, they did all that quite, quite a long time with a small engine policy. Um, the GWR, I don't know about the LNER and the Southern, 
but as soon as the GWR had gone over to uh, larger 460 locomotives in the early 1900s. So the, uh, the GWR actually addressed this problem 20 years previous to the LMS, okay? And it may, have been, it may be that because the GWR have got lots of gradients on their, on their railway. I don't know why the GWR did it a lot earlier. But anyway, coming back to this. Until 1926, they were a small engine policy, raw double heading duplicate services. Now the NMS took loan of a 460 from the Great Western Railway. It's flight number 5000 Lawson Castle. They were quite impressed with it. And they, they obviously decided then they needed, needed, really needed to get a 460 locomotive. Now they, they could not get the drawings for these from the GWR. The GWR were unwilling to give up the drawings or even loan the drawings out. And they were looking for drawings to base their new 460 class. I think the need for them was rather urgent. And in fact, they ended up getting the um, drawings from the uh, Southern Railway, which was the Lord Nelson class. And that's what they based the design of this locomotive on. So this locomotive does own some um, debt to the Southern Railway. These entered service in 1927. And they were designed by Fowler. Henry Fowler. Now, they were put straight into service, I think, literally, as they were building them. And they were quite pleased with the results. There were some problems that came up with them in, ser in, in service later, which needed to be addressed. Uh, now, Sir William Stanier, well, William Stanier, as he was, took over as Chief Mechanical Officer in uh, 1932 and he started to rebuild these locomotives in 1943 with uh, tapered boilers and different uh, frames and, and all choice of the frames and cylinders. Now ours uh, that we see go around here now is one in the unmodified, I believe to be in the unmodified condition. Okay. This one actually um, went into service in August 1927. I believe it was withdrawn in October of 1963. This one, like I said, is called Royal Army Service Corps and it got a special significance for me because my father was in the Royal Army Service Corps. That was his regiment in the army. And I bought this in memory of my late father, really. Really glad I got it now. Now, Buying from eBay or even buying new. If you're buying a locomotive and it's going to be coming mail order, you're very, very much at, mercy, at the mercy of the people who pack the locomotive, the packaging, and you're very, very much at the mercy of the people who are delivering it to you. Whether that's a, a, a courier or maybe the post office, you're very much at their mercy. And I've only ever had um, three locomotives that have had serious, serious quality issues, okay? Now, Sam's Trains, off, uh, I'm going to quote Sam, I hope he don't mind me on this. He bought one of these, and his had too much glue, okay? Mine has got no glue marks at all, but as a consequence of that, there were one or two parts where there was a little bit too little glue, okay? And one of them was a tender full plate. In fact, that came off this locomotive and fell onto the floor. Okay. Found it on the floor. Which I'll show you that in a minute, the tender full plate. We'll try to get focusing on that. And like I say, the vault gear had come out of this one, out of the cross head. So we'll talk about all of that in a minute as well. But this is now the locomotive it should have been, okay. Now, when you get a locomotive, and it's not nice to get a locomotive, that's uh, not... Um, and 100%. You've got a choice of either sending it back. I've had to do that just once, and that was where a part was missing. Or you get your, you, you know, you put it back together again. If you think it's something which can easily be re re um, remedied, and you, and sometimes as well, you don't get a model come up very often for sale, especially if they've um, they're coming up on the second-hand market. And once you get the one that you want. Sometimes you don't want to let it go. 
Um, I was determined to fix this one, and I'm quite happy that I was able to do that. Now we can have a look at this one with Lady Susan in just a moment. And we're going to talk about the repairs I had to make on it. Now if you go back to my previous video, you would have seen all about this already. But I'm going to talk about this for the benefits of those of you who did not see my previous video. And also we'll have a chance to have a look at this one on the Lady Susan, okay? So let's bring us our stuff around. We'll have one more wrap. This is a beautiful runner, okay? No problems away this one's. No weird noises, no clonks and clinks or that sort of thing. Absolutely gorgeous now. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so round we come. Now whereas my NMS compound, the 440, was a railroad uh, version, this is what you call a top of the range or um, full fat version as a lot of people uh, refer uh, to them as. Okay, we're going to try and bring this one into the um, into the station now and then we'll be bringing it on to the Lazy Susan just for a quick look, just to see what this locomotive is all about, okay? Okay, so in we go. And we'll see if we can bring this one in now. Now, on this um, particular carriage is here, I'm going to change all the couplings on these because I have been getting some derailments with these carriages. Okay, and it's quite frustrating, especially when you're trying to make a video. Uh, it might even get a derailment now, actually, unfortunately. I'm going to change, I'm going to change the couplings. I've done this before, and it can be done on these. Okay, in we come, nice and easy. Nice and easy does it every time. Okay, I'm in without a hitch. Lovely. No derailments this time. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can see the two locomotives together here. So we've got the uh, 460 Royal Army Service Corps. And um, also we've got the uh, 440, basically its predecessor. Both in uh, NMS livery. Really nice, I like that. Um, let's um, detach the... Uh, Locomotive from the carriage. We'll see if we can get this off. Oh, lovely. Okay, perfect. Right. And we get Lazy Susan. And basically, what a Lazy Susan is, if, if those of you have not seen it before, is basically a revolving turntable. I think it's more more designed for um, making cakes and things. But anyway, but for me, it's perfect for displaying my locomotives. That I was to pick them up and put them down to turn them round for you to see the other side. Now, let's have a look and see if we can see what was wrong with this locomotive. We're round on this side. I did not notice this until the locomotive was going round the track. Now we're going to need to do a change of battery in just a moment, so we're going to get a slight lack of continuity. Just going to stop the stop the recording now. Right, now then, we are zoomed right in, so that, that's what we actually need to see here. If we can get a bit more zoom going. There we go. Now what you can see down there is the valve gear on the cross head, okay? Right. There we go. So down there is the cross head and the valve gear. Well, that's all quite complicated looking, isn't it? Well, you've got a... The cylinder block there, the cross head, and the slide bar is there for it to move in, okay? That had actually come out, okay? So that had come, you, you've got like a kind of a, a sort of a pin of arrangement goes into here, into, into the cylinder block, and you've got the um, cross head goes into the slide bars there. That had popped out. And I need to get that back in. Now it's a relatively straightforward thing as long as you've got a steady hand, a steady nerve, okay. Basically all I had to do was to um, remove this what, nut here with a nut spanner. Take out the crank pin. You've got a lever there you need to position on afterwards, put back in the same position, okay. 
you need to make a note of what position that was in before you remove it. If, I like, be, if you're not sure, take pictures as you go. And then what I was able to do was move everything back and slide it all back into there. Okay. Relatively straightforward, I managed to get in with tweezers and it just fell in like a, just fell in like a glove. And uh, then I um, was able to put this lever back on and all this here, spacers. I put the crank pin back in and it was done. And in fact, the repair, I didn't film the repair because it was relatively fiddly, but it took me 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, the most, max. It was all up and running, okay? Now, the only other problem as well, I don't know if you're to see it here. Uh huh. See if we can get in there and see. Nice. You've got, you've got cab doors on, on here and, and you can't really see inside really to be honest but um down the back of the down between the uh, locomotive and the tender there's a like a kind of a full plate okay it's fixed in position okay fixed in position mine came out where it wasn't glued in properly okay uh it's hard for me to be able to, it's hard to, be able to show you this because uh i is they say the look the actual doors of the tender in the way you just might see it down there okay that had come out to full plate i had to glue that back in with super glue well that, that was just a little drop of glue there i don't think i'm oh, sorry about the strobe light effect there that's my torch um but then would actually be glued back on and again it was quite easy to do i just put on with tweezers and everything else and i was able to glue it back in place okay i don't i've got a feeling it just wasn't glued in place it was probably clipped in and it came out um, again, easily repaired. And certainly I would not send the locomotive back over either. Let's look at the locomotive itself then, now that we're back. So, well, now that we've got the locomotive we want, there's a tender, NMS. You just about see the coal load there. Very nice coal load. It's not shown as being heaped up to the top. And it's very nice, uh, relatively fine coal load there. It's a plain black livery. Now you'll get some confusion here because I did. If you just bear with me, I'll just show you what I mean. Now on the cab, right down the bottom of there, it sure I'm positive it says six P. Okay, six P. And on the box it says seven P. Okay, now it's my belief that the 7P classification may have been put on after these were modified after 1943 by, um, by William Stanier. Okay, they were fitted with a tapered boiler, okay, and, and various other modifications made to them. And I think that's when they, when they got the higher classification, but definitely 6P is the right so classification for this locomotive. You do get cab detail. You can see that in there. You can see it there, cab detail up. Very nice bit of cab detail. That's something which you'll get as opposed to the uh, railroad range. I'll just turn that torch off now. Let's right, say so you've got cab doors. You've got doors there, fixed there. Cab doors. Very nice feature. And the four plates, which is nice when it was glued black in place. Fully glazed cab. You can see that there. And the fronts. And also back on the other side, fully glazed cab there. You can see that in full effect there. Coming to the front of the locomotive. Start with this, try and get the tripod down a little bit. Get back in focus, there we go. Now a little bit difficult here because we're looking at an all black locomotive. Okay, now the steam pipe's already in the is in the detail pack, I know that much. The chain company in there that was already fixed on, okay. Um 
Separately fits a smoke box dart. You might not be able to see that, but it definitely has got one. And there's a nice little hat, separately fitted handrail on here. And a nice little lamp iron as well. Everything looks nicely put together on this one. Come around here. Oops, sorry about the tripod wobbling there. I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a mechanical lubri lubricators there. And we come on to the nameplate. Royal Army Service Corps with the crest above. Now, the Royal Army Service Corps, um, they literally are nowadays, I think they're called, they're called logistics, or something like that. And that's what it's all about. It was always about being able to move things around for an army. A, an army could really only be moved um, as good as its supplies could be um, brought up and vehicles. And that's what the Royal Army Service Corps was all about. In fact, even I think the Royal Army Service Corps originally started as with horses and carts. Okay, that's how long a tradition it is, and that's who my father served with. And in fact, my father drove all kinds of army vehicles, including staff cars, okay? Royal Army Service Corps. Again, on the side of here, we've got 6126. And the 6P classification on there. Later changed to 7P, if you believe what it says on the uh, Hornby box. The modified one, though I know this for a fact, because I've got the, uh, the Airfix one, which is quite a nice model, actually. In modified version, and they come with smoke deflectors. Well, they were later fitted with smoke deflectors, but these were not. Lovely. Here you can see the co load. Comes to the back of the tender. Drop down again just a little. There we go, back in focus, hopefully. It's a bit hard, really, because you're filming an old black locomotive. So it's hard to get all the details sometimes. I'm sorry if my camera's gone a bit floppy there. Got a steam pipe already fitted there. You do get sprung buffers front and back. Okay. And you've got the NEM type, type coupling there. You can swap those out for a bigger D type coupling. And if, like me, you've got a lot of older stock, okay, with the big D type coupling, no worry about putting the D type coupling on, as far as I'm concerned. Slightly bigger coupling. But I think that's something which, uh, to quote Barry Davis, he, he changed, I think he changes couplings over to uh, medium-sized couplings. And uh, if you want a lot of good information about couplings, Barry Davis is someone to go to about that. Oh, another thing you get on this, I don't even see it from here. Let's see if we can go up, up just up a little. You get a vent, a cab vent there at the top that slides. Again, that's something which you get with a full fat model rather than the railroad, okay? You've got your whistle here, your safety valves. And these were affected, I think were fitted with a double chimney. Which uh, I I think the Great Western didn't go with double chimneys until after nationalisation, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, so double chimney, that's uh, an advanced feature. <coughs> They've got a lot of lovely detail on this locomotive. Like the, uh, I think they're mechanical lubri lubricators. Again, you can see the valve gear down there, it's a full effect, okay? So you can see where the slide bar goes in. All the valve gear there, all this moves around, okay? And if you ever uh, take this apart, like I say, don't sort of revolve the wheels. You leave the wheels in the same place, okay? You need to look at what angle this um, lever here comes out, because that comes off with the crank pin, okay? You need to put that back the same way round, okay? So that the um, valve gear still works. Okay, so all in all, a lovely locomotive. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tour around there. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to put this one back on the track, okay? And like I say, this is every bit of the model that I wanted it to be in the first place. 
I do not blame the seller, okay, for something being wrong, because that cross head on the other side could have popped out while it was in transit. And also, unfortunately, I mean, now Sam's trains, he bought one of these, okay, and this had too much glue on it. Well, it's this one on that tender four plate, which it, it, it was a little bit too less glue on mine. Mine came out, out there, so I had to glue that back on. But I have had this hand with other locomotives before, and I think, unfortunately, I know someone's going to be shouting at the screen about this, but in my view, it sometimes comes to the territory, and if you can fix it yourself, fine. Now, I, bear in mind, I picked this one out for about £90, okay? Described as brand new in the box, okay? They are going for a lot more than that. I've seen them going for a lot more than that. So it works all, all throw that ends well for me. And we're going to go back onto the track now. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to uh, see if we can get our um, carriages moved back. And then we're going to end this video for you. And I'm going to put this on to YouTube. Um, time's running on a little bit late. But I'm a bit of a night owl anyway, so. Having a late night running session. It's something I've often enjoyed. If we know you're not going to get to sleep, which I probably won't tonight till about three. Um, don't ever get to sleep till about then usually, at the moment. You might not fill the time with a nice running session. That's my opinion. If you can't sleep, get your trains out. Now then, let's see if we can get this uh, covered up. I'm going to do all this by hand, I think. Okay, and I... I'm going to be replacing some of my roll. I'm going to be replacing the couplings on here because I think some of the. I do get the occasional derailment on here. Sorry, I've gone out of focus there. Camera flopped down in the end. Sorry about that out of focus moment there. We're back in focus now on the engine. Right, let's have a look and see then. Let's see if we can get reversing out. You see all that, that gear, that valve gear working. Can that. Oh. There we go. Nice and slowly does it. So the overload points. Beautiful overload points. No sign of hesitation there. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely superb. Now. Would I recommend one of these models? Yeah, of course I would. I mean, it's like... I gotta be honest with you. Like, like a lot of the things, like I say, you, I mean, some people might be screaming and disagreeing with me, with me here. But unfortunately, if you're buying locomotives by mail order, you're gonna get one at some point or another that's got that needs something doing to it. Okay, it just for me, it comes to the territory. I've had perfect locomotives right before, and in fact, ninety plus of my locomotives have been perfect. Okay, this one really just needed two minor jobs doing to it. I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna make a fuss over it. No, no point. And for those of you who said, "Well, did I read the description?" Yes, I did. Brand new in the box, it said. It may well have been. I mean, if I it might come out the factory like that, you know, can't much about it then, can you? Right here we go. What a lovely one there now. Beautiful. Look at that. Let's also go through the uh, the lever crossing there. I think that's quite nice. I'll put the focus on the lever crossing. So rather than the, uh, rather than the signal there. So you see her come into focus as we come, come round. The NMS Royal Scott. Royal Army Service Corps. What a lovely, lovely locomotive. I'm really happy now. I, I bought a brand new um, T9, that was perfect, a uh, brand new Dapol, that was Hornby, I bought a brand new Hornby uh, Star Class, Note Star, that was perfect, 
I bought um, a fair few locomotives. I've been, you know, most of my locomotives I've come to arrive in the Pope being perfect. Probably about the only three that I've had trouble, uh, real major trouble with, okay, was the, um, my first Hornby Star Class came broken, and that was brand new, and that actually came directly, directly from uh, a dealer. I, 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 I'll leave them out of it because it's unfair to mention them, it's not their fault. They replaced it straight away, and then the other one came through, and I've got that one uh, up together now, nice. Um, I ordered a um, Hornby King Arthur Class. And that had various issues with it. And this one here, where the whole gear, uh, the, the um, cross head had come out, and the tender full plate had come off. But apart from that, no bits out. And, I mean, that, that tender full plate was really a, it was still attached to the box. I mean, I always give the box a shake first. I don't know. One of those things. Let's watch it come round. And of course, the. Um, the NMS later went on to 462 locomotives. Uh, 460s, uh, there were these. And there was also, they came out with the Patriot class. And in fact, the Patriot class, Hornby Door Railroad version of the Patriot class. I've got one of those, well worth looking out for. I've given this locomotive a good oiling, okay. And I've had the body off and I've looked at it as well. Uh, that was for my pure repair. And now I've got something that's really, really nice. It's going to be with me for many, many years to come. Now, if you've enjoyed watching this video, press the like button and subscribe. And uh, ring that bell. Remember, oh, be, before I subscribe to a channel, I wonder, what do you, what do, you do when you subscribe to a channel? Do you pay a monthly subscription? No, you don't. Okay. It's all you do is you're made aware of future videos. Okay. And on that note now, I mean, it's getting quite late now tonight, so I'm going to bid you farewell and good night. For those of you, like I say, stay with me to the end, thank you very, very much for watching. I should bid you farewell and bye-bye.